Welcome everybody to our teaching this week. Today is going to be called Overcoming a Life of Addiction. And Gene and I just figured we would, you know, talk to the audience and tell, tell you guys about us just a little bit of where we came from and where we are today. Uh, so really with my testimony, you know, in, in my early 20s, well, really as a teenager, just, you know, the, the basic stuff of just, you know, drinking and, and smoking pot and doing that kind of stuff. But it led to much harder drugs that, like in my early 20s, I became a heroin addict. And I was just, you know, just sniffing it at first. Then, I, then it went full blown in the shooting up. And I was addicted to that for a very long time. Uh, I finally got clean from that in, let's see, what year was that, that I was clean? That was, uh, was it like 2001? I believe in two, I think in the, I think in 2000, 2000, I was clean. I met, uh, Jacob's mom and she really wasn't in, you know, she wasn't into like a really heavy drug scene. So because of that, I ended up getting out of that lifestyle with this. Now, before this, I still wasn't a believer yet. But the Lord really just, his hand was still on me and his grace was still upon my life, protecting me through all of this. And, uh, you know, getting off of that was very difficult. You know, I was sick for a month, just uh, all that poison just getting out of my body. And like I told Gina and my mom before, you would think that after somebody would get off of that, they wouldn't go back to it again. Right. But even after that, after I got sober, I you know went back to it for a short period of time doing it again. Fortunately, I didn't develop a habit and then I stopped and then I never went back to that again. Uh, in 2012, I, I was helping a friend move a pool table and, you know, I picked it up and, you know, I pulled something out of whack in my stomach and my sister's good friend, Trish, uh, she was, she's a born again believer and she, she would call me on the telephone and she would pray for me. You know, I tried going to the chiropractor and, you know, nothing was really helping with it and she would just you know, just say, put your hand, you know, on your stomach, and she would say a prayer in Jesus' name, and, you know, I would just do that, you know, I didn't really know any better, I was just going by what she was telling me to do, <clears throat> and then Gina will remember, uh, one day she called me up, and she asked me what I was doing, and I told her I was reading the Bible. Yeah, and I said, that's not funny. <laughs> I said, that is not funny. Yeah, so no. what, did, what did you think about that? When, when I that thought you happened? were joking. I did. Because we've actually known each other since we were like 15 and had been friends all those years. So, I mean, I knew he wasn't like a Bible reader or a believer. So when you said, I'm reading the Bible, I'm like, that is not funny. And I think it's important you tell the audience that you had a prayer for me. But what was your prayer to the yeah, Lord? I did. Because I, did. I grew I was... up with a Jewish background. Uh, to just give you a backdrop on that, you know, I grew up Jewish, but we weren't really, you know, devout uh, Judaism. Uh, you know, my father told me that Jesus was, you know, he was real. He was a good person, but he just, you know, he said he wasn't God. He wasn't the son of God, and it was just left at that. Yeah. So that that's as far as the faith level was with that, you know, once in a blue moon, maybe going to the synagogue, I did have a bar mitzvah, but, you know, that was really it, you know, I, I believe that there might have been a God, but not anything that you would really have a relationship as a, you know, a, a real relationship with God as, you know, being a father. Right. Yeah, I remember praying, um, you know, Lord, wouldn't it be great if he just had Jewish faith? Wouldn't it be great, Lord, if he would just go to synagogue and have Jewish faith and raise Jacob in the Jewish faith and maybe he would have a bar mitzvah? Because that was like 
the threshold of my faith level of him having, you know, faith. Just some type of faith. Some type right. of faith. And I thought that would really be awesome. So this is where God does exceedingly abundantly more than you could ask or believe because Amen. I was, yeah, would have never believed he would be a Holy Spirit filled on fire for Jesus evangelist. <laughs> well, that's in Ephesians 3.20 right there. Yeah. If you would have told me back then, this is your, I would have been like, no, uh, uh wrong guy. <laughs> so, uh, yes, yeah, so I started reading the Bible and, you know, I was reading the Old Testament and really the way that I discovered and really believed in my heart that Jesus was the Son of God was I'm reading Old Testament scriptures. I'm reading Isaiah 53, Psalm 22. Uh, he's all through the Psalms. I'm reading, you know, in Zechariah, you know, how they're going to look upon him. He's pierced. Uh, reading in Isaiah, how, you know, they plucked his beard out. Uh, just so many verses, precept upon precept, just verse upon first and I was just like he has to be that Jesus is the son of God there's no way around that and on February 4th 2012 we went over to Harvest Chapel in Pennsylvania and I had a, a water baptism I got baptized in water and came out came out of that and and the very next day uh you know, also along with the, you know, drug use and stuff like that, uh, you know, I would watch pornography, you know, often and never really saw anything wrong with it. I didn't really feel like I was addicted to porn, but that was just part of my lifestyle that I would watch it and look at magazines. And I can honestly tell you, uh, when I came out of the baptismal, the next day I took all the DVDs that I had and the VCR tapes and the magazines and I just put them all in a garbage bag and just you know tied it up put it out front and had the trash men take it away the very next day it just completely washed that off of me immediately I didn't have any guilt towards doing those things but I just knew that I did not want to look at that I looked at it in a completely different way that then like the women that I were that I was looking at I I was re I realized that I mean that's somebody's mother or somebody's child and you know just to use a woman at the expense you know for my pleasure it just broke my heart and what happens is when you when you become a disciple of Christ you you love the things that the father loves and you hate the things that the father hates so you know that type of behavior you know jesus does not he doesn't love that yeah. that that breaks his heart when he sees you know people in that lifestyle because he knows that they're so much more valuable than that absolutely and so here we are now in 2021 you know still clean i have i have no desire you know to do heroin or anything like that that has never been a struggle you know gina will tell you we, we used to go down to park heights and minister to people in in the city and you know feeding people and ministering praying for people and there was never an urge to ever go back to that that was completely broken off of me and I would like you to share the word when we were at Harvest Church that time and the, we were in a class that Papa Doug was teaching and the Lord spoke to you and gave you a vision of what, oh, what yeah. he said about me. Well, he, uh, we were in a, um, a class at our former church and um, sometimes I just start receiving something from the Lord at the craziest moments when I'm supposed to be listening to something else maybe <laughs> um, but the Lord just really started speaking to me about chopper about how his hand had always been on his life and how he had saved him many times and that his life had been spared many times and 
after I gave him the word about that, he said, yeah, I can go back and look at countless times. And we had a lot Absolutely. of deep discussions about that. So, um, and I think that day I was just like, had just laid my hand like lightly on his chest as I was praying for him. And what did you say it felt like? It like, was just uh, such a heavy weight. It, it would have felt like just, you know, somebody just very strong, just really pushing hard against my chest. It was just a heavy, heavy weight on it. And that was the presence of the Holy Spirit on me because mm -hmm. she just had her hand lightly on me. Yeah. And I just wanted to say one thing in regard to what you were talking about. It's one thing to hear the testimony from the person, but then when you hear from the spouse who is like, we are, we're together all the time. I mean, we work together, we minister together, we are always together. Sometimes the spouse may have a different perspective or might have me, you know, might see things very differently, but I can tell you 100%. There is never a thought in my mind that he would ever return to drugs or any kind of addiction at all. And I see him every day and we operate together every day. And I just know that I know that when God took those things out of you, it's like they're gone. They're gone for good. It's it's not even like a remnant where it's there's this battle that goes on, right. you know, of I really want to do this, but I'm really working hard not to. There's no battle, there's no striving. Absolutely. You just truly are a new creation in Christ, you know. Right. That's Second Corinthians five seventeen. If anyone is in Christ, they're a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That's right. It's so important for people to get that. And, and each person is going to have a different testimony for how they do get set free from something. But it, it's so important to know that God is not a respecter of persons. So what he will do for one, he will do that for another. Absolutely. And he, he can take any desire that somebody has, whether, you know, whether it's a, a porn addiction, alcohol, drugs, whatever you want to put, you know, whatever the problem is that somebody is dealing with today, worry, he can remove that instantly. So I want to ask you a question. Um, when you were in the throes of your former life and multiple addictions going on and just living the life you were living, did you ever think that the life you have now, the way that you, the way that you feel about yourself and, and the way you feel about life in general, did you ever think that was possible for you then? Absolutely not. I never saw any hope for that. You know, there would be nice, uh, I was a security guard for a time. And, you know, before I, would, I was doing night work and before I would go into work, I, you know, I would, I would fire heroin and then go to the job site. And, you know, once in a while, I would just say, you know, you know, God, help, you know, help me get rid of this, you know, remove this from me. And that was just, you know, the big prayer of faith right. for that. And yeah. that and that was a process of time for that for that to actually happen. But it was like right. what I'm saying, like when that got broken off, it was gone and removed forever. Well, I think that is important and it's relevant to people because when you're in that place of whatever life you're living right now and, and whatever situations you're dealing with, whatever addictions you're battling. In that moment, in that space, you don't always see a way out of it. You don't always see the possibility for change. You don't always see that there is hope right. for a better and new and different life. And so I thought that was important because somebody who's yeah, listening might be in that space right now thinking, that's really nice for him, but I don't see any way out of this. But you didn't see right. Way I didn't out of see it a way out of it either. either. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
Right, I didn't see any way out of that. That was just like the normal, you know, addiction, people that have that. It's just, you know, when you wake up and you, like a drug like that, you know, like, the, you know, the first thing on your mind is you're going to go and get that. And that's like your first priority. Because it's just, you're drawn to that. But, but God. You know, God can, with God, all things are possible. And, you know, Papa Doug taught us, you know, a word. He taught me this word a long time ago, prevenient grace, which, you know, people may not believe that. I surely do because, I mean, it's just, you know, that's, I'm a byproduct of it, of just what that means is that even when people may not be seeking God at that time, it's important for you to know that the Father is still seeking you out. Yeah. Even in your lowest point or the worst things that you're doing, you know, the Word says, you know, we love Him because He first loved us. That's right. So we really hope this helps people. Another reason we did this, you know, when, when, when we were talking to Papa Doug, you know, he always, you know, he says things to me and he's like, you know, he's some, it, it's, it's funny to us because he'll say, you know, be careful because people might look at the two of you and just think that everything is so perfect in your life that it may not be relatable yeah. where they just think, well, everything is just so perfect in their yeah. life. We, yeah. we have tons of things that we have dealt with in the past. And we actually have serious major things that we're dealing with now. Right. But our faith in Jesus and knowing the goodness of God is what keeps us going and keeps us moving forward. Absolutely. Because we know he's a good father. And even though there might be a rough, situation going on at a time that doesn't change that he's for you and not against you that's right and people need to know this and we'll do some more teachings with that we are in the next one i'm going to share my testimony um because we just we want you guys to know who we are and what we came from what god has brought us out of because it is possible for every person. It doesn't it matter what you are doing, where you have been, what you know, awful things have happened to you in your life. Your life can be changed starting today. Today is a brand new day, and this can be your day for your whole life to turn around. So we wanna we wanna share with you, um, you know, what we've what we've come through right and that that's why you know when we talked to papa dog and he just said you guys are authentic that's why you know the name of the ministry is authentic christianity yeah. we're going to be we, we promise that we are always going to be real with you and transparent and and be honest with, with people because you always have to keep things in the light when you we learn that from papa dog you know when you keep things in the dark that's for the devil likes to uh he wants you living in those dark places right. but once things are brought to the light that's where the freedom is Amen. and i have i have so much more that i could go but we're going to cut it right there and uh this is this is enjoyable but i'll tell you that this is this is a very important thing to do i got i got a little leg tap Jean and I are speaking out right now because yes. there is a power in the testimony. Yes. So for anybody that is struggling, whether it is drugs, pornography, alcoholism, whatever it is, we take authority over that yes. in the name of Jesus and we cancel it and break it off of you from this day forward. You are free. You are a brand new creation in Christ. Old things have passed away and all things have become new. Be free. Be healed. 
be whole and be restored now in the name of Jesus. And I want you to know, never lose hope. Yeah. What you do is sometimes all you could do for this moment is you just take it one second at a time. Yes. And you just put one foot in front of the other and you keep on moving forward. And I promise you it's going to get better for you. In Jesus' name.